Okay, so thanks for the introduction. So this presentation is about a new property of five round of AES. So AES is probably the most widely studied and used block cipher. So far, no random property which are independent of the secret key are known for up to four round of AES. So in this paper, we propose the first uh, property which is independent uh, of the secret key for up to five round of AES. So the presentation is organized as follows. In the next few slides, I, I present this new property and I show how, how it can how it can be exploited to set up a new secret key distinguisher for up to five rounds of AES. In the second part, I will give uh, uh, a formal description of this property, so I will reformulate it using the subspace train notation, which was recently introduced at FSC 2017. And I will use this uh, notation to give uh, an idea of the proof of this property. And finally, I will conclude with some open problems. So I guess everyone knows AES, yes, I will remember a few details. So AES yes is uh, a block cipher which is based on a design principle known as substitution permutation network. It works on block size of 16 bytes which are organized in a four times four matrix. And it, and it uses key size of 16, 24, or 32 bytes. So depending on the key size, the number of rounds is 10, 12, or 14. Uh, each round is composed of four operation, an S-box, a shift rows, a mixed column, and another on key operation. So the S-box is the only nonlinear operation each byte is replaced by another one according to this S-box function, which is derived by the multiplicative inverse in GF228. Shift rows and mixed columns are linear operations, so shift rows simply maps diagonal to columns, and then each column is multiplied by a four times four matrix. And finally, we have the other, the other on key operation, so we simply add the, the key. So for completeness, there's also an initial other on key operation, and usually the final mixed column is omitted. I would like also to record the definition of secret key distinguisher. So a secret key distinguisher is one of the weakest cryptography attack. So there are two articles. One simulates the block cipher for which the cryptography key has been chosen at random, and the other article simulates a two random permutation. The goal of the attack is to distinguish these two articles, so to decide which article is the two random permutation and which article is the cipher. Secret key distinguisher are important for two reasons. First, because they provide a theoretical argumentation about the security of a block cipher, so a block cipher must look as a pseudo-random permutation, and second, because they are usually starting point for key recovery attacks. So what about AES? As I said, up to four rounds of AES, uh, there are secret key distinguishers that are independent of the secret key. In particular, they exploit the following properties, truncated differential, zero sum, and impossible differential. So these properties are independent of the secret key. I briefly recall the property on four rounds, so zero sum and impossible differential. The idea is to start with a set of two the 32 shares in plaintiffs with one active diagonal. So an active byte is a byte, that, is a byte that can assume any possible value, and the other 12 bytes are constant. So impossible differential was proposed for AES in 17 years ago. So for each pair of plaintiffs in this set, it is possible to prove that uh, the corresponding ciphertext cannot be equal in, one of the, in any of the four uh, anti-diagonal. So for simplicity, I assume that the final mix column is omitted. And zero sum was proposed in 1997. So we, if we start with this uh, set of plaintiffs, then the sum of the corresponding ciphertext after four rounds is equal to zero. Now the question is, okay, if we start with the same set of plaintiffs, uh, is there any property that is independent of the secret key after five rounds of a yes? So before to present this, our property, I would like to recall briefly the uh, the state of the work in literature. So uh, any key recovery attack can be used as a secret key distinguisher, but this is obviously not independent of the secret key, because in this case, part of the key, or even the entire key, if, if you think to brute force, uh, must be known in order to distinguish a block cipher from the random permutation. So what about AES? Uh, the most recent result about five rounds of AES was proposed at crypto last year. It is a zero-sum distinguisher with this property. It depends on only one byte of the key, not all. Uh, is independent of the S-box, but not of the mixed column matrix. So it exploits the fact that uh, two elements of each column of the mixed column matrix are identical. And finally, it requires the full code book. So our property is the following. Assume for the moment that the final mixed column is omitted. We consider the, a set of two the 42 shows in plaintex with one active diagonal, so the same as before. And we consider the number of different pairs of ciphertexts which are equal in one fixed anti-diagonal. It is possible to prove that this number is always a multiple of eight, independently of the secret key, of the details of the S-box, and of the mixed column matrix. 
So a similar property also in the case in which the final mix column is not emitted and also in the decryption direction. So using chosen ciphertext instead of printex, I will give a formal statement in the following. So assume for the moment that this property is true, I will give a pro uh, proof uh, in the final part of this presentation. So how can we use it to, to distinguish a yes from a random permutation? Well, the idea is very simple. We start with this set of to the 42 chosen paintex. We count the number of pair of ciphertext which are equal in one fixed anti-diagonal. If this number is not a multiple of eight, then we can deduce that the, random per the permutation is a random permutation. So if we want to distinguish five round of a yes from a random permutation with probability of success higher than 99.5%, we need two to the 42 shares in paintings and a computational cost of approximately two to the 36 table lookups. So if you are interested to the implementation, you can find it in this following this link. So this is a property. I would like now to reformulate it using the space annotation. So so space annotation was proposed at FEC 2017. I don't recall all the details, I only recall some information that are useful for the following. So for yes, it is possible to define several subspace, for example, the column space, diagonal space, and so on. I only focus on the diagonal space, inverse diagonal space, and mixed space. So the diagonal space is defined as the space of all the matrices, which are uh, given by inner combination of these four matrices, where EJI is the matrix with all the elements equal to zero, except for the one in the row J and column I. So this is an example for T0 where we have all the matrices with all the elements equal to zero except for the ones in the first diagonal. So for the following, what does it mean that two elements belong to the same set of a diagonal space di? So two elements belong to the same set of a diagonal space di, which is defined in this way, if and only if their defense belong to the subspace di, which means by definition that the two, print, the two texts are equal in all bytes except for the ones in the i-th diagonal. So this is an example for the subspace D0. Invest diagonal space is defined as the linear combination of these four matrices. So this is an example for ID0 where all the bytes are equal to zero except for the ones in the first anti-diagonal. And finally, the, the mixed space is defined as the mixed column applied to the invest diagonal space. <coughs> so all these subspace have dimension four, but we can also define subspace of higher dimension using this simple formula. What is important to remember for the following is that uh, each cosette of a diagonal space is mapped into a cosette of a mixed space after two rounds, or equivalent that if we start with two, two texts in the same cosette of a diagonal space, then they belong to the same cosette of a mixed space after two rounds with probability one. So we can use this uh, notation to reformulate this property. So consider plaintiffs uh, in the same cosette of a diagonal space, the i, and count the number of different pair of ciphertexts that belong to the same cosette of a mixed space after five rounds. So this number is a multiple of eight. If the final mixed column is omitted, uh, you can simply rep replace the mixed space with the inverse diagonal space, and the same property also so in the decryption direction, so using ciphertexts in the same cosette of a mixed space and counting the number of pair of plain texts that belong to the same cosette of a diagonal space. Now, in this final part, I would like to give uh, the idea of the proof of this uh, property. So we have just seen that uh, each cosette of a diagonal space is mapped into a cosette of a mixed space after two rounds, or equivalent that if two elements belong to the same cosette of a diagonal space, then they belong to the same cosette of a mixed space after two rounds. So we have a property on five rounds. The idea is to prove another property, an equivalent property, on a single round. So we start with plain text in the same cosette of a diagonal space, but this cosette is mapped into a cosette of a mixed space after two rounds. So the idea is to work on only on the last three rounds. And equivalent, if we count the number of pair of ciphertexts that belong to the same cosette of a mixed space, this is equivalent to the number of pair of texts that belong to the same cosette of a diagonal space two rounds before. So instead to work on five rounds, we can work on a single round, so on the middle round. So the property that we are going to prove is the following. So we consider text in the same cosette of a mixed space, ciphertext, uh, we consider the ciphertext after one round, and we prove that the number of different pair of ciphertexts that belong to the same cosette of a diagonal space after one round is a multiple of eight. So for simplicity, I need to consider the case uh, of a mixed space and zero. The proof is completely equivalent for the other cases. So we have two plain texts in this cosette, M0 plus A. So by definition, there exist eight variables such that the two plain texts can be rewritten in this way. So for the following, I say that P1 is generated by X1, Y1, Z1, and W1, and P2 by the corresponding four variables. So the idea of the proof is the following. Uh, if there are uh, given a pair of plaintext, 
if the corresponding ciphertext text belong to the same coset of a diagonal space after one round, we prove that there are other pair of print text for which the ciphertext text have the same property. And in particular, we study these following cases. So the case in which the pair of print text has three equal variables, the case in which they have only two equal variables, and so on. So the first case is very simple. If uh, three variables are equal, then the two print texts cannot belong to the same coset of a diagonal space after one round with probability one. So we can, for the following, we need to consider the case in which at least two variables are different. So consider the case in which two variables are different. So we have P1 and P2 defined in this way, where Z and W are equal. It is possible to prove that P1 and P2 belong to the same coset of a diagonal space after one round, if and only if at P1 and at P2 have the same properties, have the same property, where at P1 and at P2 are defined in this way. So P, at P1 is defined by X1 and Y2, while at P2 by X2 and Y1. So the idea is to consider a different combination of the generic variables. And to show this, it is sufficient to prove that the difference between P1 and P2 is equal to the difference between at P1 and at P2 after one round. So this is an example for the bike, we run zero and column zero. What is important to observe is that this difference is independent of Z and W. So actually we have a stronger result so if we have P1 and P2 as before, it is possible to prove that uh, they belong to the same coset of a diagonal space after one round, if and only if at P1 and at P2 have the same property, where in this case, Z and W can take any possible values. So if we need to consider the pair of print texts with two equal generating variables, then the number of collision is a multiple of two to the 17. So we have a factor two due to this different combination of the generating variables, and a factor two to the 16 uh, due to the fact that Z and W can take any possible values. So a small observation, P1 and P2, defined in this way, can belong to the same coset of a diagonal space after one round, if and only if the cardinality of G is at least three. The proof for the other case is, is uh, equivalent. So we have in this case P1 and P2 with uh, only one equal generating variables. So they belong to the same coset of a uh, diagonal space dj after one round, if and only if at p1 and at p2 have the same properties, where at p1 and at p2 are defined in this way. So by this combination, where w can take any possible value. So in this case, the number of collision is a multiple of 2 to the 10. So we have a factor 2 to the 8 due to the, to the fact that w can take any possible value, and a factor 4 due to the different combination of the generating variables. So p1 and p2, defining this way can belong to the same coset of a diagonal space after one round if and only if uh, the cardinality of J is, uh, is at least two. And finally, the final case is equivalent. So we have P1 and P2 with uh, no equal generating variables. Again, they belong to the same coset of a diagonal space after one round if and only if at P1 and at P2 have the same properties uh, where at P1 and at P2 are generated by this combination of variables. So we can simply collect all these results, and we obtain, it, and it is very simple to observe that, independent of the cardinality of J, the number of collision is always a multiple of eight. And equivalent proof also, also for the other uh, initial mix space. So to conclude, this is the first uh, five round secret key distinguisher for yes, which is independent of the secret key. Uh, we would like to give some open problems. So the first is to set up uh, a six round secret key distinguisher for yes, which is independent of the secret key, or if you want to improve these five round secret key distinguishers. So to propose other five round secret key distinguishers which are faster or which requires a less number of print text or ciphertext. The second problem is to set up a key recovery attack that exploits this five round secret key distinguisher or a modified version of it. Remember that usually secret key distinguishers are a starting point for key recovery attack. And the final problem is to apply similar distinguisher to other construction or to Non -key or to construct non-key distinguisher. So that's all. Thanks for your attention. So we have some time for questions. Yes? Uh, thank you. So have you considered the probabilistic frontier here, basically? Uh, can you do six, seven rounds if you admit uh, something which works like for 1% of the keys? Uh, not yet, it could be our future work. Thanks, more questions? 
I have one. Uh, do you have any uh, directions you plan to follow in order to extend it uh, into a key recovery attack? Uh, we are we are trying to use this distinguisher in order to set up key recovery attacks, so it's a uh, work in progress. Okay, and uh, can you give some clues uh, how to on how to do it? Uh, not yet, maybe it's too early. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. 